Here are the five reasons why your seeds turning setup sucks. Okay, I'm allowed to say that because these are mistakes I have made in the past because I'm trying to cut corners or I did not think it was necessary. But the truth is that these things are absolutely necessary if you wanna succeed in seed starting. Number one being you're choosing to directly water over mist. Now this sounds crazy, I do realize. The two options are to just overhead water or to bottom water. Now overhead watering will disrupt the seed, meaning it's going to disrupt the soil surface and if the seeds are small enough, it's going to float them kind of all over the cell and if they're not, small and they're larger size seeds, potentially disrupting whatever is going on under the soil to the point that it's negatively affecting the seedling. If it comes to bottom watering, the issue may lie in the fact that most seed starting mixes are low in perlite and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that here in a little bit. But that lack of perlite means lack of air and lack of air means anaerobic conditions and anaerobic conditions means bacteria and fungal issues and bacteria and fungal issues mean root rot, dampening off, and just very sick looking plants. And there's your answer for why bottom watering is not always the answer. The solution is misting. It does not need to be sophisticated. It could be an old ketchup bottle with some holes poked in the top. All you're gonna do is once every two days, give the top of that soil surface a little bit of a spritz after you've ensured it's fully saturated. This can make a massive difference in your seedling health. One of the first things you're gonna notice is less legginess or stretching of the seedling. I know it sounds bizarre, but it's true that excess water can cause that to happen as well. And you'll also just notice that the seeds themselves have a higher rate of germination because you have less dampening off, less seed rot, that sort of thing. So misting or sprinkling is your number one thing that you need to change with your seed starting setup. Number two is you don't use vermiculite. And this is twofold. You guys have heard me speak about adding vermiculite to the soil surface to prevent the white fuzz, the white mold we see, as well as just help ensure that the seed isn't planted too deeply, that sort of thing. It also, if you're spritzing on top or if you're dropping on top, it will help distribute the water evenly without disrupting that soil surface. That's number one. And I've had many of you DM me now that I've said that for two, three years now, you guys have used it and you said it's completely changed your results in your seed starting. Number two way to use this is actually for smaller sized seeds. So I had a DM on Instagram saying, I always fail at my flower seeds, what is going on? And flower seeds or smaller seeds, those little microscopic guys, celery is a great example of small seeds. They do best started in straight vermiculite. Yes, no joke. If you have smaller cells, either the individuals or kind of those linear line type cell trays, adding just vermiculite and then sprinkling the seeds on top with a heat mat underneath, it changes the it changes your results 100%. It allows for proper airflow, proper moisture, uh, proper heat distribution, and it makes it even easier when you go to remove said plants from your trays and bump them up. It makes it much easier um, to separate them out, particularly if they're very tiny and they're kind of all strung together. So utilizing vermiculite over potting soil when appropriate, it'll change the name of the game. You could use straight vermiculite for seed starting with any seed you'd want. Um, just keep in mind, you will need to bump up sooner than you would if you were using potting soil. So you could use it with a, a tomato, but you just obviously need to pot that tomato up sooner than what you normally would in another setting. Which leads me to number three, and that is not bumping up or not bumping up properly. So bumping up is potting up, um, I mean, it's got a number of different names, but essentially it is the intermediate point between hardening off and putting outside and seed starting. And it's the transition point where you put the plant into a nursery pot of sorts. Now you can do this multiple times and the more times you do it, 
the stronger your plant will become just from the stress of that. It loses its effectiveness, you know, if you do it a ton of times, but once to twice is considered appropriate. Now, when you bump up, the key here is to do it properly. So popping the cell out and then just popping it into a larger nursery pot, not the best. You want to tussle the roots a little bit, kind of get things separated. Maybe you want to root train the plant. So you're going to pot up into a root trainer rather than a nursery pot. And this may be the answer for anything that's a taproot plant like a tomato or a pepper or perennial transplants, trees, that sort of thing. Failing to do this correctly just gives you a weaker root system and ultimately speaking, a weaker plant. The other thing that you may wanna introduce in the bumping up process is your microbes, whether that's rhizobium bacteria or mycorrhizal fungi or phosphate solubilizing bacteria. There's so many different microbes out there that you could use. It's not just mycorrhizal fungi. And this is the time to do it. It's not to do it the seed starting time, um, you do it when you transplant outdoors, of course, as well. But if you want to do it in a controlled setting where you control the heat, you control the moisture, the bumping up actually is the best time to do this. Number four is you use fertilizer. I know it's crazy. It doesn't matter what kind of fertilizer you're using. If you use conventional or AK synthetic, organic, if it's compost, vermiculite, liquid, granular, it does not matter. All fertilizer on seedlings is not great. And it's okay in low doses. And you'll see most seed starting mixes have low dose indications on them, um, which is fine. But when we get to just like an all purpose or a bloom formula, we wanna reserve these. Typically speaking, people will say use them around two, three leaves. Um, you can, and I, I advocate for it just because I don't know what your potting soil conditions are. I don't know what environment these plants are in. So general recommendation is three to four. Now, if you're confident you used a seed starting mix and it was a fresh seed starting mix, you didn't use an old version of it and you're potting up into just potting soil, regular potting soil, you could uh, hold off on the fertilization until you've bumped the plant up and then you'd want to begin to fertilize. Now, more specifically, that fertilizer point at that bumping up position or spot, a lot of research shows that the nutrients the adult plant lacks is an accumulation of problems the plant sustained as a seedling. So if you have blossom end rot issues, now I'm not saying blossom end rot is caused by magnesium or calcium deficiencies. Very likely it's not the issue. The issue could be your soil pH. It likely is the soil pH that's the issue. However, if your soil pH is not great and you know your plants commonly suffer from blossom end rot, you're watering properly and you're convinced it's a fertilizer issue, right now is actually the time to add that calcium and magnesium because again, we're controlling that potting soil. We can control the pH of it um, if we're getting the proper mix and we'll just have a happier plant. So right now is actually the time to add that calcium and magnesium mix or um, more refined fer fertilizer mixes if you will. I wouldn't go too crazy on the nitrogen here at this point, but um, yeah, just, something basic. Number five, the last one is you're using the wrong potting soil. Now this is a whole video on its own and I'm gonna go through consumer quality and professional mixes in a separate video, but the right potting soil is the game changer. Number one, regardless of what you're using, if you're using cell trays or if you're using a blocker, you wanna use a seed starting mix. Now, the difference between the tray and the blocker is the formation or the aggregation of the cube. The tray does not need aggregation. It does not need clumping properties. It needs, if anything, small little pieces of perlite that allow for air infiltration because it's enclosed in, voila. So what you would wanna go for is a seed starting mix that has fine grade perlite and 
fine grade seed starting mix. Seed starting mix that are fine grade will have small fiber peat, meaning it's been sifted. Um, it shouldn't have sticks or twigs. If it has sticks or twigs, you probably just got a consumer quality um, brand, not a professional quality brand, which there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to remove the sticks, no big deal. And then it will have some compost. The some compost is it's very specifically seedling compost. It's, it's designed for seeds and it's minute in quantity and the fiber length is itsy bitsy comparable to that of the peat fiber length. That's what you would use in containers. What you would use in the blocking formula, and I know there's a ton of recipes out there on blocking and what blocking recipes are best, yada, yada, yada. That's all fine and dandy. The truth is you need a plug forming formula. And the only way you're going to get that is through a professional mix. And there are a number of versions out there. There is sunshine mix number three. Let me just check my notes and double check that that's the mix you're supposed to use. Yes, it is sunshine mix number three or pro max PGX. So these are mixtures that have again, fine grade peat. They will not have perlite, very little to none and they will have fine grade vermiculite, which is not the vermiculite that you see me using a uh, sprinkling on top. This is not the vermiculite you would, um, that I explained in number two. This is the vermiculite that is, is made to aggregate, it's made, made to make plugs. And it that is what the pros use. That is what the pros use. Sunshine Mix number three or the PGX is what you need because it will allow for con Densed blocks that stick together, hold aggregation, which is much better for your roots. You have to think about how the plant grows in nature and how it has the compression of soil from the outside, from above, the pressure from other roots and plants. That pressure is what roots need to dig and do their job. And without that, without that stability, we just get weaker plants through the blocking method. So, I encourage you, if you're gonna do the blockers and you want the best results possible, particularly if you intend to block, 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 meaning you go from the minis to the, the mediums to the large block and you have no intention of using nursery pots, get the PGX it, or, or the Sunshine Mix number three. It will change your life, promise you. I hope this helps you guys out. Comment down below, get crew, what your must do for seed starting is. Your comments are much more helpful than mine in many cases for specific people because I don't know what everyone goes through for seed starting and what they've encountered. But you guys have a pretty darn good idea. So please comment down below what the problem was and what your fix was. Hit that subscribe button. If, if you wanna join the geek crew, we are um, nerdy plant people and that pretty much sums us up. I hope you enjoy our company if you choose to join. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.